I'm Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, this is going to be fun. Uh, this blog might meander around a little bit, but I've been wanting to do this one for a while here. Uh, now, a lot of people I think are going to enjoy this blog. Give me the thumbs up. They're going to connect and understand and agree with what I'm going to put forth here in this blog. Some people, of course, though, are going to be uh, taken aback by what I'm going to tell them here uh, and uh, give me the thumbs down and uh, basically th think that I'm, you know, giving them a load of malarkey here. But this has to, to do with the blog I did, and I've done many of these over the years, but the one I just did recently about Vancouver condos will double in price over the next 20 years. And uh, of course, I knew I would get a lot of comments and a lot of private messages on Twitter saying, you know, you're crazy. You know, how, the prices are already out of reach for m many people, most probably, in Vancouver anyways. And now you're telling me that the prices are going to double between now and the next 20 years. And uh, yes, that's what I am telling you. Uh, actually, in the blog I did, that's what these economists and analysts were telling you, uh, these, these are professional economists, that they look at the next 20 years and easily see the price of real estate doubling in the lower mainland. Uh, it's just simple math. Uh, everything goes up. The cost to secure that land, insurance, labor, concrete, rebar, glass, it doesn't go up in lockstep to inflation, but it's going to go up two and a half, three, three and a half percent or more. Uh, averaged annualized over the next 20 or 30 years. Thus, if you a Yale Town condo today at $600,000 will be worth probably pretty conservatively 1.2 20 years from now. Might be sooner as a lot of people pointed out. Matter of fact, if you would have bought a condo 7 or 8 years ago, you would have the price is pretty much doubled. But again, I tell people that was an anomaly, a bit of a perfect storm, don't expect that moving forward. But conservatively, I tell people every 18 to 20 years. You know, let me put it this way, and I've mentioned this to a guy on my YouTube channel here. You know, you can go down to 7-Eleven right now and buy a Kit Kat bar for $1.50. You know, what do you think the price of that Kit Kat bar is going to be 20 years from now? Do you still think it's going to be $1.50? I'm going to say it's probably going to be more like about $4.50 or $5 based on inflation, the input costs of cocoa and sugar and everything else moving forward. Real estate is pretty much the same thing. A little different dynamic, uh, a little bit more going on with it, but you know, things will increase over time due to just simply due to inflation and then some. You throw in the fact that we've got 40,000 people moving into the lower mainland every year. Uh, they're not building any more land. Okay, we've got a limited supply of land, very difficult to build in Vancouver. Uh, you've got water, mountains, and the agricultural land reserve to contend with. Prices are going to go up. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. Now, the other thing I wanted to comment, and here's where I know some people, this is going to be, some people out there need what I'm going to call some tough love here. Obviously, their parents, their friends, whoever they're getting their news from, isn't giving it to them. They're, they're in a cocoon is what they are. And uh, I'm doing this as a favor to you guys. I'm just going to give you the straight up deal here on what's going on in Vancouver real estate and what's going on in about a hundred different cities right now. I'm going to give you the truth here, the hard, cold hard truth, let's call it, as opposed to the kind of cocoon you've surrounded yourself in where you're in that misery loves company crowd, that crowd that thinks that Carol James is going to help you buy a house. Carol James thinks housing in British Columbia should be affordable for everyone. Everyone should be able to buy a house in Vancouver. Everyone should be able to buy in Shaughnessy or Kitsilano or the West End. She thinks, if you listen to her, she thinks that that $650,000 Yale Town condo then has to go down to about $250,000 because at $250,000, that would be about what the average wage earner earns and would be able to qualify to buy a condo. That price would have to come down to about $250,000 to $275,000. Average wage in Vancouver is about $55,000. Now listen, don't hold your breath waiting for that. 
I'll tell you right now, I don't make predictions as you people know, but I will go on the record to tell you that will never happen. It's not going to happen ever. The other news flash I want to tell you is you have no right to entitlement to be living in a city as great as Vancouver. I know some of you have been born and raised here and you feel that maybe the city has been sold out from under you. I was born here too and I don't feel any of that, never have, never will, but some of you might. But listen, that's not how the world works anymore. And the other news flash I want to tell you is just because you were born in Vancouver and you can't afford to get into the market to buy a condo in Yale Town or even buy a condo in Richmond or Burnaby or New Westminster. It doesn't mean that the system is broken. That's just what the system is. That's what the price of these condos are. You're not entitled to live in the lower mainland. I'm sorry. And no amount of finger pointing or putting the blame on foreign buyers or the realtors or the interest rates or the banks or the government or the empty homes or the money laundering, none of that is going to make things any different for you. As I've said many times here, you can get into this market. You can buy that a Yale Town condo, buy a studio apartment for 500000 with no parking or buy a one bedroom out in New Westminster for 300,000. It can be done, but you're gonna have to work for it. You're gonna have to make some sacrifices. You're gonna have to get better at your job. You're gonna have to make more money. You're gonna have to get a side hustle. You're gonna have to give up the Canucks tickets, give up going out for dinner. You've gotta make sacrifices if you want to achieve that type of goal. And if you don't, then I would strongly advise you just to move on. Vancouver is not for everyone. It is a tough nut to crack, just like New York is, or Los Angeles, or San Francisco, or Miami, or Toronto, or London, or Singapore. I can rattle off a hundred cities here. Vancouver is not an anomaly, and I know people will say, well, hey, these other world, these are other cities have got a lot bigger incomes and corporate jobs and everything else. Yeah, a lot of them do. But Vancouver doesn't work off the fundamentals like that. Go back and watch my other blogs. I talk about it in my book. It hasn't for the last almost 20 years. Why would it revert back to fundamentals now? Vancouver is a vacation city. It's a, it's a lifestyle city. We're starting to become a lot more uh, of a tech hub, a very small tech hub that I think will develop much stronger along the West Coast here from here to Portland. So there are starting to get some high paying tech jobs we didn't have five years ago. I've talked about it many times. Many of my young buyers right now are pulling down 100, 100,000, dollars $140,000 a year plus bonuses. Those jobs weren't around five years ago. Those are a lot of my buyers. So I would advise people if you can't buy, if you're complaining about getting in, then get yourself into one of these high paying jobs. That's where you want to be. But you know, it's funny, I've got buyers that are buying six, $700,000 condos that are blue collar workers. They're electricians, they're plumbers, they're skilled tradespeople. They own their own landscaping businesses. They own their own equipment rental companies. And then I've got a lot of young tech workers. Life is about how, how you position yourself. Just because you can't buy a home in Vancouver doesn't mean everybody else can't. I tell people there are over 200 sales every day on the Vancouver Real Estate Board. Some more, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Downtown Vancouver alone, there's probably 20, 30 condos sold every single day, five days a week. So lots of people are buying. If you can't buy, you should ask yourself, well, how do I get like my next door neighbor? How did he buy? What did he do? How did he get in himself a position to buy? If you buy my book, I'll tell you how you do it. You gotta pay yourself first. You gotta make some sacrifices. You gotta have some discipline. Because I've often said, the biggest hurdle to buying in Vancouver or any city is getting the down payment. You gotta get qualified for a, by a bank first off for the mortgage, but then you've gotta come up with the 30, 40, 50, 60,000, whatever you're looking to buy in the down payment. I mean, you can buy out in Richmond right now on SkyTrain for $300,000. Wood frame, 320, you can get yourself a renovated older wood frame in a good strata. 
So depending on your, your work history and how much you're earning, if you've got a decent job and you're making 50, 60, 70,000 a year, you could probably qualify with five to 10% down. So 25 to $30,000. Once you're in, your mortgage payments and your property taxes and maintenance fees aren't gonna be probably a whole lot more than what you were shelling out for rent. Do the math on this stuff. It can be done. I'm working with young buyers and I'm working with buyers of all ages every single month. They're doing it. You can do it too. But you need to do what I've talked about many times before, the mirror test. You've got to stop pointing fingers at putting the blame on everyone but yourself for your lack of success. And stop surrounding yourself with this misery loves company cocoon that just perpetuate the reason why you haven't bought. These bloggers that are out there, they're just, it's crazy. Get away from it. It's up to you. But again, Vancouver is not for everybody. This city has had some tremendous growth in the past 20 years. It's been discovered as one of the best cities in the world to live, hands down. Don't take my word for it. Every year we're in the top five on these you know, publications that, that survey the top 150 cities in the world. Vancouver's always near the top of the list. I travel extensively. I know into most big cities in the world, Vancouver is special. A lot of people would tell you that compared to a lot of world cities, Vancouver is still pretty decently priced. It's not cheap, but compared to a lot of world cities, uh, prices here and the, considering the Canadian dollar is, is not that bad. I won't get into that one, but for sure, we've got some expensive real estate here, but it's not for everyone. And you know, there's nothing wrong with it. If Vancouver doesn't, if you can't get into real estate here and don't want to make the commitment, then I would suggest you move to a city that's more affordable, a city that's more aligned with what incomes are. So that would be a city like Winnipeg or Saskatoon or, or maybe the Maritime provinces. But it's never gonna be Vancouver. As I say, Vancouver will never align itself with what the average guy earns. This is an equity-driven market. People that have been in the market for a long time have ridden it up. You're also competing against, because it's such a desirable city, you're not just competing with locals. If you wanna live in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan and buy a house there, you're probably only competing with the local buyers there. You're not doing that with Vancouver. You're competing with buyers from China, although they're not foreign buyers. They've got their PR status or their Canadian citizenship, but they're originally from China, Hong Kong or Beijing or Shanghai, wherever. You're competing against buyers from Toronto, from Montreal, from Alberta. You're competing with buyers from the United States. This is a hot, hot real estate market. This is the major leagues. But if it's too much for you, I totally understand that. As a matter of fact, I would tell a young person, if a guy was just out of school in his, and, he needed to, and he had a job offer in Manitoba where he could make six figures or 75, let's say, not a bad idea to take that job at that 75 in Manitoba, bank as much money as you can, get established, and then move back to Vancouver when you're more established and you've got the 100 or 150,000 to get into the market here as opposed to having to rent at 22 or 23 or 2400 a month. Pretty tough to get ahead if you're making 80 grand, good salary, but you got to spend 35 or 40 on housing. Go to a cheaper market. It's called paying the price, paying your dues. That's how life works. Some of these people, they want to they expect to be able to live in the West End or Yale Town. Like it's in, they're entitled to it because they were born here. You've got the wrong attitude. You've got to change your attitude. If you want to live in a city like Vancouver, you're going to have to work. You're going to have to hustle for it, just like all my other clients have. We've all got, all my clients have got one thing in common. They all decided to stop complaining. And if they want to get ahead in life, they're going to put it on their shoulders. They're going to get a good job. They're going to go to school. They're going to get better. They're going to work on weekends. They're going to cut their expenses down to the bone while they save for the down payment. That's what you have to do. If you don't want to do it, I understand it. It's a lot of work and it's tough and it's not going to be easy. But stop complaining. 
it's not a good look. <laughs> Some of you guys, it's not a good look at all. And I feel for you guys because you're just wasting your time with this negativity. People, final thing I'll say, I've talked about this many times. Negative people, this is why your attitude is so important. I can spot a negative person within 20 seconds of speaking with them. They, they exude negativity. And if you read books on the topic, you know, it's life is like a mirror. If you're exuding pessimism and negativity and complaining, guess what? It all comes right back at you. Just makes things worse. You've got to change your attitude. And part of that too is who you're following, who, who your group of friends and, and associates are. Life's too short to be hanging around with losers. Sorry to be blunt, but it is. This is something I was fortunate enough to find out at a very young age. Stop the, the finger pointing. If you want to get in, Vancouver is not for everyone. It never will be, contrary to what Carol James will tell you. That lady doesn't know what she's talking about. She doesn't have a clue. If it's going to be, success is going to be up to you. A little rhyme there. She put a rap song together. It's going to be all, all on your shoulders. But it can be done. Never too late to turn a leaf, turn positive, tighten your bootstraps, whatever you want to call it, and start heading in the, other, in the right direction with this. But Vancouver real estate, just like the stock market, there's always going to be ups and downs along the way. It's the short term, who knows what's going to happen. But over the long term, Vancouver real estate will go nothing but up. It's just a fact. Just like real estate in Southern California and London, 20 years from now will be worth a lot more than what it is today. It's just the way it is. It's just simple economics. There'll be setbacks along the way, maybe a 5, 10, 15% correction. It's never in a straight line. But real estate should always be bought first off as shelter, and it's a long-term need anyways, like I've always said. You need a roof over your head. You need stability for you and your family. The nice thing is it does double duty and the capital gains grow tax-free. Best tech shelter we've got in Canada, and it's unlimited what you can put in. I always throw that one out there. You're also using leverage. Buy my book and I'll give you the basics on how leverage works and how it can work in your favor. Same thing with the stock market. If you're saving for retirement, which everybody should be, it's a long-term goal here. 20, 30, 40, 50 years, the way people are living now into their 80s. What the market does this week or next week or the next year should be a very little concern to you. Just buy good companies, hold them, monitor them, or even better off what I tell people is just buy an index. Buy the, S the Vanguard S&P 500. That's what Warren Buffett would recommend. Everyone should just buy, set it and forget it. And don't worry about all these comings and goings on the news. You're wasting your time. Stay positive, focus on you, getting better, enjoying your life, take a vacation, let your real estate holdings and your stock portfolio keep it on autopilot. I'm Old Big Lane. As always, I'll see you next week.